Yeah, I'm wrapped to uh, see the boys get a good result. You know, we've had uh, four pretty tight games leading into this one. So to actually get the margin out a little bit, some good, some, some good reward for the players. He's improving, yeah, there's no doubt, which uh, <clears throat> he'll continue to improve. He's, he's still, and you know, he's aware that uh, he's just starting to get a few of those rusty bits out and starting to feel better running the games out. He pulled up well after the Hawthorne game. Um, so these couple of longer breaks are, are going to do him the world of good in terms of his preparation as well. What were some of the aspects tonight that stood out for you? Um, I, in terms of our performance, yep. um, for longer parts of the game, better decision making and ball use. You know, that's we've been working pretty hard on that. Um, so that that was pleasing. Um, some of the contested marking from some young players like Ebert and Darling, you know, was outstanding tonight. Um, obviously, the uh, getting the game played an hour half and locking it in there for a fair bit, um, and not letting Melbourne get too many fast breaks on us, um, was a really strong effort as well. Is it the tackling aspect that's gone up a major? Not that's improved, um, but you know, we had to we had to win the footy and get it forward first, and, and then try and lock it in our forward line. So we have to still do well at stoppages and, and use the ball well to get it forward, um, not cough it up. Uh, I think a few of Melbourne's dangerous passages of play were from our turn our poor turnovers, not not real pressured kicks or just wrong decisions. So they're areas we, we're con continually working on, but. Um, yeah. Has Jack Darling's level of play this early in his career surprised you at all, John? Uh, the fact that he's been able to step in and not just hold his own, but yeah, I would, I would say that he's performing um, above what I had hoped. Yeah, um, but I wouldn't say I was surprised because we were warned that he was talented. You know, our recruiting guys were rated him really highly. So. Um, and, and we also know that uh, physically he's a bit more mature than even an Andrew Gaff. So uh, that does help. Um, you know, he's not... Uh, Gaff's two or three years away from maturing physically and being at his peak, and Darling's maybe only a year or so away. What's the challenge for him now? To <clears throat> sustain that or... Yeah, he's... To, 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 play, uh, to play his role, yeah. The, the next level... Well, there's, there's... Through any player's career, there's, there's a next level every year for usually six years, they continually improve. Um, so we expect Jack to uh, work hard to make sure he follows a similar pathway. John, speaking of next levels, has Matt Prittis even taken his game to another level? You mentioned getting the ball in and out and Prittis is doing up week in, week out, isn't he? Yeah, he, he's held up extremely well for us, um, you know, with, with a very young midfield for a, a few years. It, I don't know, it, it wore him down a couple of times where it was just hard work. Um, last year, he and Adam Selwood, uh, and this year, even with um, you know Scott Selwood and um, Luke Shuey uh, going through the midfield, it's still pretty young, but they've matured and they're helping him a, a lot now. And um, throwing Nick in there at times gives him another big body in there to help. Has it also helped that he knows that he doesn't have to be taking on the sole responsibility of kicking it forward? He can get the quick hand for it, pass out to someone like Shuey who will be able to pick someone up. Yeah, it's um, that, that's a bit about the blend of the players in the team and, and having. You know the mix of players we want out there, which which we've been able to get for the majority of this year. John the McRae. Next, sorry, you can. Okay. John, next month you play Essendon, Fremantle, Bulldogs, Collingwood. Is it fair to say that could be season defining? Um, well, the Essendon game is our first big challenge. You know, we've we've performed reasonably well against Sydney and Hawthorne. Um, Essendon are another team that are that are going really well. So we just want to take that challenge up to them. Um, what defines the season is 22 rounds. That's the way I always look at it. Um, so our first five weeks doesn't define our season as, as the first eight or nine rounds won't. It'll be over 22 rounds. Um, but Essendon, um, and I can't say we'll just take it a week at a time because it's 10 days away. So we'll just take it a week and a half at a time. It's been five impressive hit outs for three wins. You dare to dream of finals, but it's still too early. If we had won five, I would be a little bit excited. Yeah. But, um, you know, we've uh, lost to Hawthorne and Sydney in games that uh, we had a chance to, to maybe win. 
And to to make the finals, you have to win some of those games against those opposition. And uh, that's where Essendon presents a great challenge for us to see where we're at. With Lecrae, thing with, with Lecrae using his way back into the side, must be pleasing to see a lot of guys step up and share the load with their goals and kick more. Yeah, them. yeah, definitely. Um, oh, it was... It was uh, it was great to have Lecker back out there. He's pretty dangerous, a little bit rusty, but um, you know, three quarters of footy out of him was a good result for us, and uh, um, you know that certainly helps us in terms of our planning going forward. You had over 60 inside 50s for the game. Is the big issue now to to capitalise on those those inside 50s, those entries, and that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Time? Every every team's aiming to try and be efficient going inside their forward 50, and. Um, yeah, if we if we were slow at all today, Melbourne certainly had numbers back. It's, uh, it's certainly the way they play, and um, we're reasonably happy with with how we went. You know, we missed a couple of early shots with Nick, missed a couple of good running shots at goal that didn't score at all. So we've got to make sure. Uh, I think Kerr had a, a long shot; he could have carried the ball a bit further, and Kennedy kicked one in there. So we had opportunities um, to kick a couple more goals that we've got to make sure we're good enough to take uh, if we want to be a better team. Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to uh, vindicate anything. I have my beliefs, so I'm not trying to vindicate anything to myself. Um, I still got a strong belief and faith in in this group going forward that they can become a very powerful group of players. But uh, there's a massive amount of work we've got to do to prove that, um, and that's what we're aiming to do. Uh, starting this season in reasonable form um, hasn't really vindicated anything to what we want to do and. Um, f- absolutely focused on doing the hard work to, to see these guys achieve real success. Just back on Fredo, actually, um, John, um, he did take a knock to his finger. Is there any problem there? I haven't heard, no. No, I didn't know. So. No other injuries or anything? Like that. <clears throat> Nothing, I don't think, tonight. It's a bonus, yeah. Mark, John? Mark Nikoski is probably a bloke that sneaks under the radar a fair bit. I'm just interested to hear your thoughts and the way you viewed his progress through the injury struggles and Back in the side yeah. Doing. Well, Nico played his majority of his football early as a defender, um, and uh, we realised that uh, we weren't utilising maybe the strengths we wanted out of Nico. So we challenged him to uh, to change his game to play more forward, um, without guaranteeing that he was going to force his way into the side as a forward, but it would at least give us another option. And uh, he's worked really hard at that. Had some option. Uh, opportunities early last year and then got injured um, and he was no walk up certainty to be in the side early this year but his f- work rate and form warranted him getting the first opportunity there and uh, he's grabbed grabbed that opportunity and you know he knows this, this, uh, we've got Jerick Whedon and uh, Lewis Broom and uh, Ashton Hams, Andrew Strike all in pretty good touch that, that are waiting for their opportunity so it's, uh, there is pressure on there for the guys to play their role and, and perform, and Nico's doing that. As a coach, is it quite rewarding for you to see him be able to push his way back after so much? Oh, it's more rewarding for Mark. I've, I've seen him do the work. I know he's never given up, and I know he's had frustrations, but he's a very, very positive member of the team and, and a senior player now, really, with our group. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a fair reward for him. Yeah, he's, uh, he played more up the ground today uh, and he's presenting well and grabbing opportunities. So he's certainly um, performing a really strong role for us.